SATS tests taken by seven-year-olds in England could soon be scrapped. Is it about time or is it time to test our children in another way? Good evening. Last week, the Education Secretary, Justine Greening, announced that SATS tests for pupils in year two, that's six and seven year olds, could be scrapped. Instead, there could be a new teacher assessment for four and five year olds instead when they start infant school. Education correspondent at the EDP, Lauren Cope, explains. Education Secretary Justine Greening last week announced um, quite a wide ranging um, look at assessment at primary school level. The main part of that was that SATs for seven-year-olds, so the key stage one SATs, may be scrapped. Um, they are the tests that I think it's it's half a million pupils around around the country do in reading, writing, science, and maths. Uh, and the proposal is to get rid of those and replace them with a teacher test for pupils in their reception year. So four and five-year-olds would have a test. The, the details are quite uh, um, are quite vague on what that would be at the minute. We don't know how. That, how that would take shape but we do know that the Department for Education has said pupils shouldn't know they are being tested so the goal of it is to firstly reduce the sort of exam pressure and strain on pupils particularly young pupils at seven years old but also to take the burden off teachers as well the pressure to sort of get great results as we often hear about at, at the key stage two SATs and GCSE and A level to try and ease that and take away that at, at, at key stage one. So is this a good idea and what could it mean for teachers and for pupils? Now here to talk about this is Scott Lyons from the National Union of Teachers, their secretary in Norfolk, and Sarah Brownsword, a primary education lecturer at the University of East Anglia. Good evening to both of you. Good evening. Mm -hmm. Now we'll start with the initial reaction, Scott, with you. What, what were your first thoughts when you heard this news? Uh, shock and surprise, to be honest. Uh, I'm really glad that the government are finally listening to the teachers and the profession uh, and actually doing something about the exam factories that our schools have become. Yeah. So would, you, would you agree? Was, was this a bit of a surprise to you as well? It was a surprise, but um, like Scott said, it's, it's a welcome. I think, um, I think all people that work in education would agree that it's, a, it's about time that, um, that's, that this was really looked at in detail. There's been a lot of changes over the last few years, particularly in the assessment system. Um, and I like to think that this consultation is the government actually realising that it hasn't quite worked and that they need to really look at it. Well, because you used to teach at primary level uh, as well before going into the lecturing side of things. Why, why were these so unpopular? I think that part of the reason is the huge amount of pressure that there is on children. Um, in key stage one and in key stage two when they do their SATS tests um, and you know teachers try not to put that pressure onto children but unfortunately the pressure that is on schools to perform in the league tables and to have good results um, eventually kind of filters down and that pressure ends up being put onto the children. Is, is that something you see a lot Scott that that level of pressure on frankly everyone involved? Oh definitely definitely and the teachers you know we're a caring profession we try and soak up that stress uh, and that tension as much as possible and you see the strain on you know our members especially um, and you know the, the shambles of last year's key stage one tests you know leaked papers leaked results leaked leaked questions um, it's just kind of undermined people's confidence and you know parents confidence in these tests and got people really questioning and you know campaigns like the campaign for real education and um, protect our schools um, are really kind of pushing on to say question do we actually need these tests uh, and there are other options out there because uh, one phrase you used earlier was exam factories so it, it sounds a bit a bit blunt but w w what's the negative aspects of it being a situation where children are being taught to work for these tests? Ex well the exam factory mentality is this reduced curriculum, reduced fun, reduced intuition of the profession, reduced interaction between schools uh, uh, and where they become actual competitors for one another and competitors for children and for staff and it's a reduction of the education system to a kind of binary pass or fail, good or bad, um, you know financial kind of um, viability. Um, and it's kind of business factory mentality that we're trying to push away um, to make sure that actually our children are prepared for the future in a kind of in, um, innovation, creative society. 
Because would that pressure, Sarah, maybe put some people off even going into the profession and actually worrying about they're not there to look after and teach the kids, they're actually just going in there to, to, to produce figures? Yeah, I think it does. I think there are people who, you know, maybe are working in schools at the moment in different, you know, as teaching assistants or, you know, who are doing work experience in schools who might have thought about going into teach, teacher training and becoming teachers themselves, but actually get put off because they don't want to take on that that pressure of, of having to get children through their SATs tests. Um, I know when I speak to at the trainees that we have at UEA, lots of them who are looking for jobs at the moment, are not. they don't want to go into year two, they don't want to go into year six because they don't want to have that pressure. You know, they're thinking, oh, I might, I might, I would quite like to be a year six teacher in two or three years time, but not in their NQT year. Um, and you know that's a real issue because we need and that's know, something you hear a lot yeah yeah, yeah a lot um, mm. on the kind of flip side of that we've also got schools who won't take our students in year two or in year six and we need our students to have like a wide variety of experience amongst the different year groups um, but schools are so worried about the the, uh, the performance of their children that they are reluctant to take students into year two or year six. Okay, Sarah right. Scott, thank you. The Department of Education has also said that the move will help to reduce the burden of assessment on teachers and pupils. We spoke to Len Holm, the former head teacher at Angel Road Infant and Junior School in Norwich. Children um, of, of a young age, at infant school age, five to seven years, come to school and we know that they learn by being inspired, by being excited about learning, being taught how to learn, the joy of learning, uh, and they make very good progress. Um, teaching them or leading them towards taking a test, dragging them through a test at seven years of age, just stifles their development, uh, and in my view, just kills off any enthusiasm that they naturally bring to school. Now, I guess the advantage of speaking to a former head teacher is they can frankly speak the truth mm. a little. Does that sound like the, the truth that maybe a lot of teachers can't always say? Yeah, it sounds very accurate. It sounds very, you know, just going on what Sarah said earlier, you know, year two and year six used to be the celebration of their infant schooling, their primary schooling. Now, a lot of our members, you know, they dread this time of year because they might think... Oh, that's, a, that's a strong word. Yeah, yeah, they, they might be thinking, oh, am I going to get year six? Uh, and, you know, and the whole... Um, school's performance and the whole judgment of the school could be resting on how I get through 28, 29 children at the end of this year. Because what impact can that actually have on a teacher out outside of the classroom? I guess the pressure must be huge. Yeah, I I've dealt with more year six teachers and supported more year six teachers the last two years than I ever have done before. Um, it's just the, the amount of pressure they feel that they're under. And again, it used to be a celebration year six of their primary school and getting ready for high school. And now it's a drudge of tests and retests. And if your children aren't, aren't coming up to scratch, then unfortunately those year six teachers, you know, tend to feel the, the pressure even more. But we are, after all, talking about the children more than anything here. When it comes to the pressure on children, how do you prepare a teacher for, for helping a child get through that kind of pressure at, at the age of seven? I think it's really hard because, you know, we as teachers, you want to be there to support children. Um, but, you know, we're seeing more and more um, mental health issues in school in terms of the children who are suffering from anxiety, you know, really young children having panic attacks because they feel like they're under the pressure that from these tests. So you, you'd link the two? I think mm. so, yeah. I think that, that the, the two are linked. I don't know whether you would agree with yeah, that. I'm, I'm hearing more about self-harming in year yeah. six girls especially than, you know, that was never heard of. No. You know, when I first started teaching 15 years ago, you know, it was never heard of, but, you know, it's happening more and more. You know, my members are saying we're dealing with mental health issues, self-harming, eating disorders, uh, and, you know, considering SATS revision um, starts, you know, as early as Christmas, but probably even earlier, you know, that's, you know, six months, five months of kind of real pressure on those children and oh. it makes it takes a toll. Well pressure is a word we're hearing an awful lot of and uh, under these plans the tests in reading, writing, maths and science which are taken by more than half a million youngsters each year will no longer be statutory. We spoke to people in Norwich City Centre to see what they thought if seven was too young to be taking SATS tests. I think the children haven't been in school long enough to really um, be able to successfully complete them and I just think children should be playing at that age and not focusing too much on their schoolwork. it's a lot of stress. If you've got a child who's really nervous about doing things like that then they shouldn't have to do it, it shouldn't be compulsory. I think it's too young to put pressure on somebody like that but I think generally to take a test it's probably not. If they're confident in what they know 
then maybe not. I just think it's too young to be judged and put into uh, league tables and assessed in that way. Very formal learning as well, they still should be playing. It's just too much pressure to force into a seven-year-old. Like They have to learn to read everything in one go and some of them don't understand half of the words they're saying or reading off a paper. It was a bit of pressure but nothing, nothing that she couldn't handle and nothing that she wasn't overprepared for because the school had covered all the curriculum that they needed to do. So a real mix of views there and we've been uh, having plenty of people getting in touch on social media as well. We'll start with uh, Sharon Bailey. She says there's no need for these tests. A good teacher should know their pupils. Too much unnecessary pressure on children. No pressure is a word we've been using an awful lot. Um, Annie Elliott uh, on Twitter as well says no pressure from my end. I think teachers apply too much pressure. I, I guess one accusation could be it's that parents put too much pressure on they're saying that maybe teachers put too much pressure on the kids. Is that something you maybe agree with or, or disagree with? I think, it's, yes, it's true to some some extent because the amount of pressure you know comes from the DfE onto the school, from the governors, uh, onto the head teacher, down into the, the you know the teachers, and it does roll downhill. There's no two ways around it. You know, teachers will take the most of the burden. They will try and soak up and absorb as much of that pressure as possible. But end of the day, they're going to have to get some children through that test, and uh, if if it's believed or perceive that this, this child should be achieving at a certain level, um, then you know, teachers will have to kind of challenge. But can some of that pressure come from the parents on the child? Can they be part of the problem, unfortunately, even though they're not trying to be? Yes, yeah, I think some parents you know, do take it very seriously and can be a bit competitive. You know, in my experience, most parents are, are equally concerned as we are with the well-being and the whole child, not just their performance on one summer's afternoon or you know, in a reading or maths test. And we'll just go to, to one more. This is from uh, uh, Jean Mononen. I hope I've pronounced that right. Children are not stupid. They know when the pressure's on. Ridiculous system. We should look to Europe and start school at six or seven. Um, children know when the pressure's on. I, I guess that's a fair representation. They, they know when something's different. Yeah, I think that they do, and, they, and that's why they feel the pressure. And just kind of going back to the first person that you that you read out, one of the things that they said was that you know, teacher, a good teacher knows their pupils, and there isn't any need necessarily to do tests. And I think that that's really key here. That one of the things that teachers do continuously on a daily basis is assess the children in their class. It's an ongoing thing. It's not something that just happens, you know, once a year on one day as a test. Part of being a teacher is that you're continually assessing children, assessing their progress, using that to inform your planning and inform your teaching. Um, so a good teacher knows where their pupils are, knows what progress that they're making. And you can walk into a teacher's classroom and point at a child and say, tell me what that child is like in maths. And they will be able to tell you. You don't necessarily need to test the children well, to so get we'll, that Well, so in part two, we'll get on more into the best way mm. to maybe assess children mm. of, of that age. That's coming up next. But do stay with us. After the break, we'll be talking more about SATs and what happens next. <laughs> Welcome back. Tonight we're talking about SATs tests for seven-year-olds and whether the government's plan to potentially scrap them is a good idea. On the panel this evening, Scott Lyons from the National Union of Teachers in Norfolk and Sarah Brownsword, a lecturer in primary education at the University of East Anglia. We'll hear more from my guests in just a moment, but first, his education correspondent at the Eastern Daily Press, Lauren Cope, and what happens next? It's still very early on um, and the consultation is likely to, to last sort of a, a good part of the year, the next few months at least. Um, the unions have said they are going to sort of try and rally parents and teachers and schools to, to make sure they have their voices heard and they have their feedback. Um, the NUT, the National Union of Teachers in particular, has said that they're not happy with the proposals as they are. Um, they're cautiously optimistic that SATs may be scrapped but they say that the tests for four and five year old pupils there's still concerns about that and that actually in the past when schools have been asked whether that's something they'd like to see the answer hasn't always been yes it's actually not been met that positively in the past um, so it's going to be a few months of argument counter argument um, and people trying to make sure that the voices are heard before a decision is made. Lauren Cope from the EDP there um, Scott cautious optimism for welcoming this. What would you like to see happen next in this consultation? Again, we're pleased that the government are listening and seem to be responding for, you know, the NET's continuous campaigning against, you know, over-testing and uh, 
you know, exam factories for our children. I think we need to push on, you know, push further, and maintain the campaign, especially in relation to all SATs in primary school sector. Um, you know, we, we really want to kind of boycott the, the key stage two SATs as well. Um, and I think, you know, any any hint of pushing through baseline assessments, as in, you know, children that are within the first month or six weeks of coming into school being assessed and tested, rather than settling down and socialising and enjoying their experience uh, of, of school, that's something that we're going to be fighting against as well. Now, the, the idea of testing four and five year olds, and I, I know I personally have got a five year old who's from a, the very e the youngest end of the, of the mm. school spectrum. I know for sure the difference between them and someone who's at the very top of their age group. Could that be a problem, do you think, maybe going into this? Yeah, it's definitely a problem. Um, children who are August born or younger in their years um, are, uh, start school a lot far more further behind um, than older children in their year groups, and it takes a long time for them to catch up. You know, you look at even um, the kind of results at GCSE, there is a difference between summer born and autumn born children, so it is an issue. Um, and you know, obviously, when they're just starting school, there's so many more things that are happening and that are more important in terms of what you're doing in a classroom with four-year-olds than testing them. Does that sound right? Yeah, and the, the NUT are getting behind the More Than a Score campaign, which is, again, something I referred to earlier, and, and they're looking for a kind of rich experience for our children, a rich assessment f um, for parents and rich feedback, uh, rather than a kind of maths, English, and above average, where you know doesn't mean anything to a lot of parents. What they want to know is the experience their child's having in the school, the relationships they've got, and you know the experience and the kind of assessment of that child as a whole person. Okay, Scott, Sarah, thank you. But uh, how will schools, teachers, and children be rated if tests are scrapped? We're so used to seeing league tables and numbers and things now. Former head teacher of the Angel Road Infant and Junior, Len Holman, has got one idea. Head teachers, other senior leaders in school. Uh, have to spend time observing teachers you know, at the chalk face in their classrooms uh, and they should be looking for um, an environment where children are comfortable, it's exciting, um, it's a real learning environment, there's lots of activity going on, you know, that the, the room itself just, just buzzes with anticipation for learning. Um, any teacher or inspector worth their salt should be able to walk into that environment and be aware of it. And then you only have to look into children's books to see the sort of progress that's being made, the standard they're operating at. Um, and observations of teachers reveal you know, whether they're switched on, whether children are identifying with uh, the learning that's being provided for them. Um, that is what I would look for. And I think you could easily mark you know, classrooms, children's progress uh, and teachers' ability in that manner rather than just totally relying on test results. Len Holman, former head at uh, Angel Road in Norwich. Now, for, from a parent's point of view, you might, you might go along to a parent's evening and have a look around the school and you see a version of the school. From a teacher's perspective or a head teacher's perspective going into a school, can you, can you tell by walking into a class or into a school what kind it is? Do you get that kind of gut, gut feeling, I suppose? A, a parent would never know. Yeah, I go into a lot of schools with my role, um, you know, visiting head teachers, visiting members uh, uh, across the county, and you do get that instinct, you do get that feel, you get that vibe, you get that kind of, th there's something going on here. And then when you get into the classrooms and you see the children, you can just see the learning, and it's hard to kind of put into a kind of into a box how learning happens, but you just kind of pick up on it and the learning, the learning experience that the children. On are the having. flip side, can you see when it isn't as it should be? Yeah, yeah. Definitely, as you know, you, you, you can just kind of see that it's, it's, it's hard work. The children aren't engaged. They're not learning from one another, um, which is one of the biggest things that you see in a, a real learning learning environment. Does that sound familiar to you? About the, you, you can tell yeah. a teacher can tell, I suppose. Definitely, and I get also go into a lot of different schools. We visit our students when they're on their placements, and again, you can you can see a good teacher. You can you know you don't necessarily have to have a set of criteria that you're ticking off, but you just get that feeling. You you see the way that they interact with the children, and also looking at the learning that's happening is something that's really clear, um, just from the atmosphere that you get when you walk into a classroom. Because if we are in an environment now where things have to be measurable, that the government have to be able to say, our schools are doing well, this school is good, this school is not so good, how do we go about doing that in a way that doesn't hurt teachers, it doesn't hurt parents, and it doesn't hurt the children going forward? Sarah? A big question. It is a big <laughs> question. Um, 
I think it's, you know, a lot of it does come down to you have to look at the bigger picture, that it isn't just about results, it has to be about the whole child. And actually there are schools that maybe don't have fantastic SAPS results, but the well-being of those children is really, really good. And that's a really important thing as well as, you know, SAPS results and, um, and everything else that is kind of measured. Um, so th I think it's really important that you look at everything when it comes to, to schools. But how does that help a, a parent, say, pick which school they want to send their child to? They, can, they look at their Ofsteds, they look at their, their mm. figures. Um, how could a parent then pick? I guess that's a, a big part of the problem that people are now used to looking for these things. I think most parents, you ask them, you know, as a parent of a seven-year-old myself, I didn't look at their Key Stage 1 results. I wanted my, my sons to go to the local school, the local good school, to be part of the community, to feel that they're part of the community, to feel safe and secure, uh, to make friends in the local area. That was my first interest. And then further down the line, it was, oh, I might see what their results are like. But actually, you know, that's what I think parents really want, to feel like they're part of the community and their children are as well. So if we are looking at a, a system of, of teachers uh, checking and testing four and five-year-olds in sort of a, a, a soft way, I suppose, so they don't even know they're having a test, how, how would you and, and the NUT like to see that happen if, if it does happen? I, I personally, and I think the NUT uh, follow the same line, I think it's an unwanted distraction. I think it's all about building relationships. You know, the, the teacher modelling how to form relationships within schools, uh, learning relationships, socialising relationships, so those children can go out there and practice that with one another in a fun, safe environment. And that sets them up for you know, a learning experience for the rest of their time at primary school. Because I guess the challenge would be, and I'm not sure if, if either of you can ask this, how do you test a four or five year old? I've, I have four and five year olds and they're far busier pretending to be dinosaurs or yeah. something. That's, yeah. that's my child anyway. Um, how do you test a four or five year old accurately, I suppose? I think if you're going to test them at that age, then it has to be something which is practitioner led and observation based so that it's part of what the um, at what an early years practitioner does anyway, which is constant observations and looking at what the children are doing, what they're able to do and what their next ste steps in their learning is. Um, early years practitioners do that anyway and that's what I think the baseline test, if there is one, it needs to be based around that. It needs to be the same thing. So it's not something additional because of the workload mm -hmm. on teachers. Um, and it can't be something, it can't be so, you know, sitting down and making the children write with a pen and a piece of paper because most children can't even pick up a pencil properly when they're four years old. Um, so yeah, I think it needs to be something that's just integrates within the what's happening in the classroom anyway. So they're doing every day, you know, because that's, you know, and, and that feeds into what the, a, a wider perspective of what that child's doing. And, you know, that would be across the year, you know, not on a certain week or where everyone in the count country or county is doing it. OK, let's get a bit more of what you've been saying on uh, Facebook and Twitter. Uh, we'll start with the, uh, the Mardler. Uh, they say Ofsted needs to get hands on and noses deep into the classrooms, looking at resources and skills, not what the children can do in a test, because that is not necessarily a reflection of what a school is doing for the children. Scott, very much similar to what you were saying earlier. And Carrot says, from experience, the SATs are awful for children. Year six is geared towards them passing the SATs, not learning. They are children only once scrap the sats and assess the teaching in a different way well it sounds like everyone will be quite happy with this uh, this idea then um scott sarah thank you very much indeed for your time it's been a very interesting indeed now that's all the time we've got for this evening if you do want to get in touch with your comments you can search for mustard tv on facebook and on youtube as well we'll be on twitter at mustard this week have a very good night